All right, let's get a uh, quick sound check from you, G. Keith. You want to come back from five for me? Five, four, three, two, one. I don't know why we do sound checks. You always sound good, man. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Marco? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, I can hear you, but I can also hear a little bit of background noise. Do you have like a machine running or? There's, a, there's an AC that is running uh, behind me, kind of. Are you able to move to a different location? Yeah, I was trying that earlier. <laughs> he, he, he tried, but he couldn't. So he's in the Harlem Week office. So we're going to probably have a little background noise uh, okay. as, as if we were outside or something, you know. Hey, we'll roll with it, man. Mar Marco's a radio guy, too. Awesome. So he understands. I do, I do. All right, perfect. I think we'll be all right. I'm sure it'll only switch on and off throughout the show, so we're 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 fine. Okay. Do you have headsets on too, Aaron? No, no, it's just uh coming through the speakers. So so you won't be able to tell if in fact the cover's too hot or not then? No. Um I can see on the the levels that when I send it, it it's it's good, but for some reason for you it's it's too hot. So okay. it's just got to be whatever I'm sending out through the auxiliaries comes in hotter. So even if I had headphones, I wouldn't be able to hear what I'm hearing, what you're hearing on the auxiliary. Oh, okay. All right. Because <clears throat> uh, last week it was like she was uh, it was static. Was is it always like that? Because I've always sent it at that level. No, it only for the last two weeks has been like that. Like oh, static. weird. Yeah, I'm glad you said something. I'll uh, I'll try to remember that next time as well. If not, you know, just hit me over the head. Remind me. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Two breaks today? Two breaks, yeah. All right, you got it. Is Ryan in today? Yeah, he is. Oh, okay, tell him I said hello. He's floating around here somewhere. Okay. I told him you were asking about him. Yeah. 30 seconds. Okay. Twenty seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, have a fantastic show. Here we go. The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. The crossroads where culture, lifestyle, and community meet. All hosted by the legendary New York radio TV personality and proud Harlem American, G. Keith Alexander. Well, thank you so very, very much. And welcome to What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. Wherever you are, I want you to know that I appreciate you for joining our neighborhood as we hang out together in Harlem, America. Today in the What's Hot Spotlight is Harlem Week, an annual celebration of the best of Harlem, which works to promote its rich African-American, African-Cuban, Hispanic, and European history, as well as arts, culture, religion, business, entertainment, and sports. So it is my distinct honor and pleasure to say that Harlem Week is What's Hot and here to tell us about all the fun and exciting events happening during Harlem Week is his executive director from the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Marco Nobles. Hello there, Marco. Hello, G. Keith. It is an honor to be with you, uh, a legendary Harlemite that you are. Uh, <laughs> 
not, not just a radio or television personality, but legendary Harlemite in general because of the person you are. So it's an honor to be here. And, and uh, we are in Harlem week. And, you know, I, I must say I'm not the executive director, though uh, there, there's so much work in that job. I don't know if I can do that. I'm a board member of Harlem week and proud to be so and, and, and a child of Harlem week, I should say, too. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. And uh, who do I have to talk to to make you the executive director? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a job I, I can really handle. There's a lot going on right now. I, you know, just the everything that has to be dealt with as an executive director has uh, a lot of balls to have in the air. Um, but you know, it, it's always uh, it's always good, and it's good to be able to do it somewhat live uh, and in person this year. So, all right. So, so we're going to talk about. Harlem Week, and we're going to talk about all the wonderful events and everything. But tell us, what do you do for Harlem Week? Let us know a little bit about you. Well, what I do, I mean, as I mentioned, I'm on the board uh, of directors, but I, uh, our board of directors is a very active board. We're not uh, just sitting and, and meeting. We're, we're sitting and meeting and, and working. Many of us have different roles and are responsible for a number of different events. I work on you know, coordinating uh, a lot of the programming uh, virtually and, you know, live on stage programming. I also work on uh, a lot of the media activities, media relations, uh, and I also work a little bit with uh, sponsor relations as well, as many of our board members do. Well, that's pretty important uh, responsibility that you have, uh, uh, putting all the the spokes together in the wheel. So that's great. So now for those of us who uh, aren't familiar with Harlem Week, because I've got a lot of people who listen from uh, around the country and, and out of the country who enjoy coming to New York and, uh, you know, for the festivities coming for Harlem Week and, and other uh, uh, attractions. Uh, tell them, give them a little history about Harlem Week, please. Well, Harlem Week started in 1974 as a, as a one-day event to really lift the spirits of those who lived in Harlem at the time, because 1974, uh, Harlem looked very different. New York City looked very different, felt very different. Um, there was lots of crime uh, throughout uh, the city and, and, you know, and in our communities like Harlem and Bed-Stuy and, and things of that nature. Um, th there was a lot of uh, despair around uh, Harlem looked upon as the quote-unquote ghetto. So a number of people came together, Lloyd Williams, Bosa Rivers, Tony Rogers, Stephanie Francis, people like Percy Sutton, uh, David Dinkins, uh, a number of people came together to help create a day to celebrate Harlem and its history and its culture, and, and that became Harlem Day. Uh, that one day event you know, then turned into a weekend and then a week and two weeks and, and a month worth of activities uh, that celebrated Harlem. And you know, we got to the point where we said, only in Harlem can you have a, a week that lasts a month. You know, <laughs> due to the pandemic, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, last year, uh, we scaled back our activities to do one week of events and we did them all virtually. Uh, this year, we're, we've expanded to do 10 days, um, and it's a hybrid festival with virtual and live entertainment and activities taking place in, in the Harlem community. Wow. So uh, in, in doing so, uh, was it difficult in deciding uh, which events you would have uh, since you had to scale back uh, for, because of the, the, the pandemic? And last year, uh, and I was part of the, the virtual. Uh, last year, we, we had virtual. Uh, but this year, it's the hybrid, virtual and live. Was it difficult deciding on, on, on what would be actually live this year? It was because we, we certainly had to take into account uh, COVID protocols. We had to take into account, you know, the way to manage certain events, um, to have to even scale back. There are certain events that we are doing live that we've had to scale back to not be as large as they have been in the past. So trying to manage all that, and we had to look at which would be the best events that would fit uh, given where we are at this point in time with the, uh, you know, with 
health issues and with, you know, uh, still dealing with uh, the lasting effects of, of COVID-19. Now, you know, o- over the years prior to uh, uh, COVID, uh, we, we had uh, a great day in Harlem, which was uh, at uh, Grant's tomb. Uh, do, do you know a lot of people don't know who's buried in Grant's tomb? That's what they tell me. I can't believe that people don't know, but I, people ask the question all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've actually been in Grant's tomb and looked down and I've seen Gr- uh, General Grant or was he a president? Wait, G- General he Grant. He was a general and a, and a president. Yes. Right. So I, I've looked down and I've seen his casket and his wife's casket uh, mm-hmm. in, in, entombed uh, in, in, in there. So this year, uh, unlike other years where uh, we've had the uh, Great Day in Harlem at Grant's tomb, um, uh, in fact, how many people prior to the pandemic came out on a Great Day in Harlem? Can you give me an estimation of, of how many people you think? It, it was estimated that 40,000 people would come out to a Great Day in Harlem throughout the day. So you can imagine trying to figure out how to how do we scale that back. We, we will this year um, because we have to, but you know, yeah, it's a 40,000 person event um, that takes place. And it's one of our, obviously one of our signature events during Harlem Week and always one of the first events of Harlem Week to really get people into the Harlem Week spirit. Well, this year uh, we, we, we're gonna scale back and, and I've, I'm honored to uh, be uh, one of the uh, the hosts, along with uh, Debbie B, uh, Debbie Jackson, formerly of the Hal Jackson's uh, Sunday Classics. Uh, Debbie and I will be uh, co-hosting the live stream from Grant's Tomb. So those of you who are listening, please come out August 8th. We're still going to have a great day in Harlem at Grant's Tomb. And you come by uh, the table and say hello to Debbie and myself. So now... What, what can we expect this year at uh, the Great Day in Harlem as far as entertainment uh, and uh, some of the, the luminaries who will show up? Sure. I mean, you, they, there will be people who've come to Grant's Tomb before for a Great Day in Harlem. They're used to the, the vendors and the exhibitors and the foods and being able to get information. Uh, and they'll be getting all of that will still happen. It'll happen less so. Uh, we'll have our boots you know, distanced properly. We still encourage everyone to come out and and wear masks, whether you are vaccinated or not. Uh, If you're coming out to the live event at Grand's Tomb, you can, you know, get vaccinated if you wish. If you've not been vaccinated yet, we have vaccination stations on site so that you can get vaccinated. No need for an appointment or anything. Just come and get vaccinated. Um, And then, of course, we have our events on the stage with entertainment from local performers like Uptown Dance Academy, like Impact Repertory Theater. We have a number of Broadway productions. Broadway is coming back in the fall. A couple of shows that have already just opened. Uh, and we're going to be featuring Broadway throughout Harlem Week, but certainly on a great day in Harlem. Performances from plays like Girl from the North Country and Ain't Too Proud. And uh, Ruben Santiago Hudson is bringing back La Coana Blues to Broadway. And he's also going to be performing on Sunday at a great day in Harlem with the Lackawanna Blues Band. So you have all of that going on. You have the gospel superstar Hezekiah Walker who is performing. You have an R&B singer uh, who is known for the hit Cause I Love You. Uh, Lenny Williams will be performing. You have Ray Chu, the, the you know, music director to the stars, uh, performing and bringing a number of special guests, including uh, the great diva Allison Williams. So there's a lot of entertainment uh, for people to come out and enjoy you know, at Grant's Tomb this Sunday, August 8th, from noon until 7 p.m. Uh, it's a great day in Harlem. And everything that people can see on the stage, if you're there in person, you can also see online because, as uh, G. Keith mentioned, it will be streamed, you know, it will be live streamed throughout the day on, on harlemweek.com, uh, as well as... Uh, 
where you might normally watch G. Keith, I believe, or on certain uh, or on, the on web Harlem platform. America, on Harlem, on Harlem America. America, yeah, yeah. So, so it'll, it'll be a double stream. So you can watch it on HarlemMove.com and Harlem America. Thank you very much for that. I mean, that was hey, you gave us a, a quite a, a rundown of uh, <laughs> events for this Sunday, August eighth, and it's at Grant's Tomb. And uh, if you can't be with us, if you're out of town, uh, you can't be with us, we'll be live streaming, as Marco said. Uh, Marco, the, um, I remember uh, before uh, Ruben Santiago Hudson uh, actually put up uh, Lackawanna Blues, he and I were coming from somewhere, an audition or something, and he was telling me that he had, he, that he had written this play about his life and about where it come from and that uh, uh, that he was working on uh, making it happen. So I, I am so happy and so proud of him to 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 know that he finally got Lackawanna Blues and which we we did see it on television as well a few years ago. It, it was a TV show, uh, but it'll be good to see uh, Ruben Santiago Hudson. Uh, of course, you mentioned Ray Chu and, and those of you who may not be familiar with Ray Chu when you, when you hear his name or see his face. Ray Chu has been the musical director at the Apollo Theater for many years, played for so many stars. And then he became the musical director at Dancing uh, with the Stars and also America's Got Talent, I believe he's the musical director for. But anyway, Ray Chu, you'll be able to, to see him out there on uh, Sunday as well. And of course, the great diva, Miss Allison Williams, who uh, she's got a song called, what is it? Uh, uh, Summer Nights in Harlem. Summer Nights in Harlem. We, we've uh, featured her on What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander some months ago. So you can go and check out the podcast at harlemamerica.com and uh, listen to her life's journey. So now, okay. So Marco, uh, you mentioned the vendors. And I remember that uh, years past, there's so many food vendors out there the food is going to be off the chain so if you if you come out on sunday and you haven't eaten if you're coming from church or wherever it is there'll be food out there galore uh now let's go to another event the the what is the next big event uh the next well there are a number of events throughout the week that are that are all virtual Okay, let's talk about that, those. That people can, can see. I'll, I'll, I'll highlight a couple. We have uh, you know, summits and conferences. We have our youth conference and hackathon on mm -hmm. August 9th, um, which features a conversation on jobs and careers, uh, whether it's in the theater industry or through technology or the intersection of technology and health. We have uh, also uh, our Congressman Wrangle, Charles Wrangle Systemic Racism Summit, talking about you know uh, the issues of systemic racism in America, what we can continue to do about it and the steps we need to take. Um, that takes place on August 10th uh, from noon until 2 p.m. Uh, we have a health summit on August 12th from noon to 2 p.m. Uh, talking about the various health issues, uh, racism as a, as a health priority, um, and also taking care of our emotional and mental health. And then we also have also on the 12th, a, a panel dealing with, you know, Broadway reimagined as Broadway is opening back up. What does that look like for those on stage and backstage and then for the public? Uh, and that conversation will happen from three to five on August 12th. Um, those are a couple of highlights in addition to performances from uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center featuring Whitney Marsalis, performances from the Metropolitan Opera, uh, a special piece that they've commissioned just for Harlem Week that celebrates uh, Blacks in opera through the Metropolitan Opera. And then we, all, we come to next weekend, our big weekend, Summer in the City in Harlem Day, August 14th and 15th respectively, that have tons of events all within those two days. So there is some 80, 90 events throughout Harlem Week uh, 2021. Uh, and you know we can talk more about a few of them. I don't wanna take up too much time right now or give too much initially. I, I know we're gonna come back and try to go through some of these piece by piece. 
Yes, we will. And uh, thank you very much there, Marco. I do want to remind folks that if you want to actually see the rundown, you can go to harlemweek.com and you can check out the complete schedule there. And you can also go to harlemamerica.com and you can check out the complete schedule there as well. Uh, We'll be uh, coming back shortly to uh, talk more with Marco about Harlem Week. And I want to remind you that you can uh, go to uh, your Apple store, uh, go to the App Store, and you can download Harlem America. You can download Harlem America so you can actually see some of these uh, videos uh, and interviews that we've done uh, over the past year or so. We've got our first seven up right now. So you can go to Harlem America, download it uh, from the App Store uh, uh, for Apple, and also you can go to Google Play and download the app. We'll be right back with Harlem Week and Marco Nobles right after this. And we're clear. Great. And the, and, and the sound on the intro was, was perfect. Okay, cool. Thanks for the feedback. How much time do we have? I'm just going to plug in real quick. Uh, How much time do we have, Aaron? Uh, We're going to be on break for about another 30 seconds. Okay. Hey, Ken? 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 Twenty seconds. Okay. We're all there. There's no one here during the day. Ten seconds. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Here we go. Coming back. We don't have someone here during the day. We've got to go pay you someone. You're listening to What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. To reach our show live today, call in to 1-866-472-5788. That's 1-866-472-5788. Also, you can send an email to G. Keith Alexander at harlemamerica.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. We're with uh, Mr. Marco Nobles, a very important uh, 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 individual uh, here in uh, Harlem and beyond, especially with Harlem Week. He's okay. the guy um, that, uh, that has helped to, to put it all together. Now, uh, you guys don't know this, but we are sitting in the uh, Harlem yeah. Week office. And in the Harlem Week office, we've got, uh, you know, other uh, business being taken care of. So you might hear a few voices uh, from time to time, but hey, it's okay. Yes. It's all right. So in any case, uh, you mentioned uh, Wynton Marsalis and, uh, and, and jazz. Uh, give us the date on that so that uh, folks will know. That will be August 10th at 8 p.m. And they'll be able to watch that uh, on harlemweek.com. August 10th at 8 p.m. August 10th at 8 p.m. Wonderful. Okay, great. Now, there's also a, another jazz event taking place. Uh, is that great jazz on the Great Hill? Great Jazz on the Great Hill, that's one of our live events in partnership with Jazzmobile and the Central Park Conservancy, and that's taking place tomorrow, August 7th, uh, from 4 till 7 p.m. Uh, for those in the area, you can come uh, to the entrance of Central Park at 106th Street in Central Park West. That's the closest way to enter to get to the Great Hill. Uh, doors or gates open at 2 p.m., uh, uh, and that's a day that also features Allison Williams, uh, along with um, the Alan Harris sextet, or septet, um, excuse me, uh, and a number of other performers that are fantastic. It's always a great time. So you can, you know, wear your mask, come bring your picnic basket, your blanket, 
and find your socially distant space on the lawn <laughs> and uh, really enjoy a wonderful afternoon of jazz and, and dancing, you know, on the great lawn or on the great hill, I should say, uh, in Central Park. Now, I remember there was a, a very funny movie called Uptown Saturday Night. Uh, yes. However, this has nothing to do with the movie, but tell us about the event Uptown Saturday Night. Well, Uptown Saturday Night um, is, is really fun because over the years of Harlem Week, one of the most popular pure concerts that Harlem Week did was called Uptown Saturday Night. Uh, over the years, we have not done it as much lately, um, but you know, this year, uh, as we in, or in this virtual and live format, we decided we would bring back Uptown Saturday Night, but we're going to do it virtually. It's going to be a virtual concert that is curated uh, by internet radio station Rhythm and Soul Radio.com that I happen to uh, manage and run. Um, and it features uh, a number of incredible independent artists that um, you would normally hear on Rhythm and Soul Radio.com that are from, and these artists have ranged from you know, hip hop artists and soul and funk and rock and, and a little jazz and blues. Um, and you know, there are some from Harlem and uh, DC and, uh, you know, and uh, as far away as New Orleans. And we have an artist who is uh, performing from Copenhagen, Denmark. And we also have a, a special uh, series of performances representing what's called the Black Wall Street Music Project that you know, acknowledges and uh, shines a continued light on uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma and what happened 100 years ago with the Tulsa riots and, and the de destruction of Black Wall Street. And they're using the music to you know, get the message out and trying to rebuild the spirit of Black Wall Street. So that's going to be a fun, and I should mention, we, there are DJs, there, so you'll be able to dance a little bit and, and sit and watch you know, performances and dance a little bit more. So it's going to be a, a fun night, you know, uptown Saturday night for Harlem. And will that also uh, be streaming as well? That will be streaming on, on uh, HarlemWeek.com starting at 7 p.m. Fantastic. So uh, we might as well, since you mentioned it, give your radio network a plug. Tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> uh, sure, RhythmAndSoulRadio.com uh, is called Urban Eclectic Internet Radio. We are an, an urban station featuring all genres of music. Um, so it's music from an urban perspective. So you may hear anything from R&B to hip hop to jazz to funk, soul, rock, blues, spoken word, you know, celebrating all of our music and our art within the station. And uh, again, we focus heavily on what's, what's called independent artists. So they may not be artists that you hear on your traditional radio stations as much, but they are incredibly talented artists who have strong followings and tour the country regularly and tour the world regularly performing uh, for, for large crowds. They just have not gotten the, the super large crowds that we uh, see with the, the Beyonce's or the Rihanna's or the, the Jay-Z's or those type, but they're uh, in many cases just as talented. All right. Uh, and uh, your show is on when? Uh, I'm on every Tuesday and Thursday night from 10 p.m. to midnight on RhythmAndSoulRadio.com. On Tuesday nights, it's also simulcast uh, on Harlem uh, Community Radio, WHCR 90.3 FM. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, wherever you may be, uh, and those of you who are certainly out of the Harlem area, as you can hear, there is so many wonderful things consistently happening in Harlem and Harlem week is just one of the, the major events that we uh, celebrate here in Harlem. And uh, so we want you to always, uh, as we say, Harlem is a state of mind. So whether you're in Harlem or out of Harlem, you can always connect with Harlem. And now, you know, if you didn't know before that Harlem week, has so much entertainment, and it's free. 
it's absolutely free that you'll be able to uh, uh, stream or if you're going to come into the city for the weekend, you'll know what's happening. Tell us about the uh, Joints Are Jumping. Now, what event is that? Joints Are Jumping is actually a series of events at Harlem restaurants and nightclubs, particularly obviously that focus on and feature music. So uh, it was started a few years ago, um, before the restaurant boom, as it were, um, of, of restaurants here in Harlem to celebrate, you know, the culture and and show some of the new restaurants that were starting to to come into into play. Uh, this was ten, maybe fifteen years ago. Uh, uh, last year we did a online feature version of it. This year we're going to do it live again, especially coming out of the pandemic. A number of restaurants have struggled mightily. You know, some have closed. There, there have been some that have opened newly, you know, in the pandemic. But being able to do joint to jump in gives us a chance to showcase some of these incredible restaurants like Oso's, Lucille's, Melba's. Of course, you have the staple of Sylvia's, uh, you have Dinosaur, you have a number of locations that have great food and great music. And we're gonna feature a number of these locations and encourage people to come out and join us as joints are jumping, whether it's on uh, Saturday night, tomorrow, whether it's on Tuesday through through Friday, uh, whether it's going to a, a jazz brunch, a gospel jazz brunch on Sunday. And so all of that will be part of the Joints of Jumping events. And again, as you've said, you can get the full schedule of events on HarlemWeek.com. And HarlemAmerica.com. And HarlemAmerica.com, yes. Now, uh, I, I remember um, one year no, several, several years, you had this oh, beautiful array of women uh, uh, <laughs> wearing all these different fashions and looking beautiful and so forth and so on. So I understand that this year is going to be another fashion show. Tell us a little bit about this one. Yes, uh, yeah, we, we uh, the fashion shows have been extremely popular throughout the history of Harlem Week, going back to the days of the great Lois Alexander and the Black Fashion Museum, who uh, curated the original Harlem Week fashion shows years ago. Um, so we continued that tradition. Uh, the person who heads that up is Deborah Williams of Her Game 2. Uh, she curates our fashion shows now. There's one uh, adult fashion show, as we say, uh, that, as you referred to, the, the beautiful male and female models um, who wear wonderful uh, outfits and feature, you know, designers of color. Uh, that will take place on Saturday, August 14th, as a part of Summer in the City. Uh, then we also do a children's back-to-school fashion show with uh, our young models modeling clothing for the you know, you may see going as they're getting ready to go back to school. Um, we've always been uh, pleased to have wonderful support from Macy's over the years who would provide many of the clothes and allow the young people who are modeling to keep the clothes um, as a special gift to them as they're getting ready to go back to school. So, you know, we have two fashion shows this year. Um, that is on Saturday, August 14th. And then Sunday, Harlem Day, August fifteenth, is our back to school children's fashion show. Wow. Okay. So now, <clears throat> I, I remember. Uh, I think it was prior to. It was Harlem Week prior to COVID, and correct me if I'm wrong. There was a a fashion show, and I, I remember seeing there there were these guys, uh, and they were uh, dressed in. A beach wear or something like that. But in the middle of the fashion show, we took a break and Janet Jackson came out and said hello <laughs> to everyone. Uh, yes. That, that was great. Uh, do, do you have uh, Janet or anyone this year uh, coming out to say hello to the folks? Well, we, we have more than just coming to say hello. We have various performances and various interactions, I'll say. Um, when we look at uh, 
next weekend, uh, the 14th and the 15th, Summer in the City in Harlem Day. That is obviously our big weekend. Summer in the City is the the, the big build up uh, to Harlem Day, which is always our biggest day. Mm -hmm. uh, and the day that you know started it all 47 years ago. Uh, so uh, somewhere in the city, we're uh, going to have a really fun uh, thing going on with uh, Tina, the Tina Turner musical on Broadway. Um, people will be able to look online and, and engage in the Tina Turner Dance Challenge. Um, one of the, the cast members from Tina will demonstrate uh, some of the dances and the moves that they see in the show. And we invite people to then go online and do their own uh, version of the dance on, you know, on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, make sure you tag uh, and, and hashtag Harlem Week and hashtag Tina uh, so that we can see it and, and share it uh, along with you. Uh, and then on the 14th, we invite people to come out and participate in a live dance workshop led by cast members of Team that is the Team of Turner Musical. So that's going to be a lot of fun for people to come out to enjoy. And then on top of that, uh, we have performances from uh, Caribbean superstar Bungie Garland. Uh, so people who know soca music, reggae music, you know how huge Bungie Garland is and has been for uh, well over a decade now. Uh, we have performances from Grammy nominated uh, group After Seven uh, that will take place mm. on that day as well. Uh, so they, that's of course on that day. And then on Summer in the City, the 14th and Harlem Day, there'll be a, a casting call, a full public casting call on our stages for Ain't Too Proud. Uh, the Motown musical on Broadway that's the life and times of The Temptations. Um, we did a version of this uh, a few years ago before COVID and one of the gentlemen who actually won won a spot in the play and is will be in the musical when it opens back up on Broadway in the fall. So now they're coming back to Harlem to do another casting call over Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th for, to fill other roles in the musical as it comes back in the fall. So that's something for everybody to come out to. If you're able to come out live and do it, that would be great. And, you know, of course, you can watch it all online on harlemweek.com and harlemamerica.com. So come on out if you can. If those of you who always wanted to be on Broadway or you want to take your shot, come on out and take your shot at it because it's going to be a good time. <laughs> so... So some, someone out there who may be listening now or, 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 or someone who may have aspirations to, to be on Broadway can audition to be a cast member in Ain't Too Proud to Big. Is that what you're telling us? Right. That's exactly what I'm telling you. If you have your opportunity, uh, come right on out. 135th Street uh, between St. Nicholas Avenue and, and Adam Green Powell Jr. Boulevard at either one of our stages you'll be able to, you know, audition on the spot for Ain't Too Proud. Well, you know, uh, I, my first, my first opportunity to stand on the stage of the Apollo Theater for a whole week was when the Temptations and Spinners had a show. And the Spinners had, it was like 1973 or 74, the Spinners had this, 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 this uh, huge album out. Uh, and but the Temptations were on the show as well, and they didn't have a hit. But I got an opportunity to work with the Spinners and the Temptations for a week at the Apollo Theater, and that was great. So I, I'm 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 gonna feel as though while I'm watching uh, the 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 performance, I'm I'm gonna have a little kinship uh, with uh, uh, Ain't Too Proud to Beg because of uh, my. Uh, first experience with the Temptations. Uh, it was something else I wanted to to uh, mention. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm not a runner. I've not been a runner since I left the Marine Corps, and they used to have us wake up every morning uh, before uh, Chow and run three miles. Uh, so I've not been a runner since then. But my friend Regina Fleming, uh, she is a 
a runner, and she's run in all of these various marathons. And we've got the 5K, uh, Percy, no, the 5K David Dinkins marathon. Is, is, is that what it's called? It's, it's celebrating David Dinkins, yes. Um, so, so it is, you know, that, that's become a very popular event over the last couple of years. Um, and so we obviously couldn't do it last year because of COVID. So this year we are doing it again on August 14th. Uh, people can go to the New York Road Runners website to register. But you can also, if you're not able or don't want to run in person, you want to run at home or wherever you are, you can do a virtual 5K and you can sign up uh, at the New York Road Runners website, nyrr.org. And you can register to run virtually. The virtual run uh, begins uh, on August 7th and goes through August 14th. The in-person run and walk, I should mention, uh, because you can, if you don't want to run and you just want to walk, you can uh, do a, a, the health walk as well. And you can register for that as well on the website. Uh, and you can do both of those in person on August 14th. Um, but the virtual run and walk begins on August 7th tomorrow and goes all the way through uh, August 14th. All right. Uh, we're going to take a short break here. We've got more Harlem Week activities, as you can uh, uh, imagine. Uh, and uh, we'll be right back. But remember, if you want the full rundown, go to HarlemWeek.com. Or, and you can go to HarlemAmerica.com for the full rundown for Harlem Week. I'm G. Keith Alexander. This is What's Hot Harlem America, and we'll be right back. And we're clear. Okay. Fantastic. Hey, uh, I don't know how you have all this in your head. You're doing a great job, uh, Marco. You're hitting all the great- in my head. I'm reaching to kind of pull up stuff as, as we talk. I, and I, you know, some, some names get you know, pushed in the wrong day, so I, I'll try to correct myself <laughs> as I can. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you're doing a great job. I'm telling you. <laughs> How much time, Aaron? Uh, 50 seconds. Okay. Ten seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. You're listening to What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. To reach our show live today, call in to 1-866-472-5788. That's 1-866-472-5788. Also, you can send an email to gkeithalexander at harlemamerica.com. Now, back to the show. Thank you, Kevin. I want to remind folks that uh, you can take Harlem America TV with you. We're uh, testing our Harlem America TV app, so you can go to the uh, app store on your iPhone and download the app, and you'll be able to see some of the uh, TV shows that we've done so far, some of the interviews that we've had with our special guests, and uh, we'll be loading more uh, coming up. And if you happen to have an Android phone, you can go to Google Play and download the app there. Always, it's a pleasure to be with Marco Nobles, and uh, Marco is... Uh, talking about Harlem Week, which is uh, it's just going to be a, a, an amazing time here in Harlem. And uh, we want to let's go back to the virtual 5K David Dinkins uh, run, because I'm, I'm curious, uh, you, you say people can run at home, so th they would then uh, take their iPhone or, uh, or, or Galaxy phone with them as they run uh, around the block or run or run in the house or or how do they join the 5k run well when they they register and i can't explain the process of I, I, yeah you know, the, the technology is is amazing so it's hard for me to explain exactly what happens but they can get the full information there's an app 
that you get access to to be able to, to track yourself as you're running and then it loads itself up to uh, the New York World Runners website and then you can see you know your times in comparison to you know some of the other runners you know from around the country and around the world. Um, that's the best I can explain it to you. Uh, I wish I could explain it more but uh, I can certainly let everyone know that if you go to nyrr.org and look for the Harlem 5k run uh, saluting David Dinkins you will be able to get all the information about how it works, how you register, how you can be a part of the virtual 5K run, and you can register for the in-person run and walk if you wish as well. You can do both. You don't have to do one or the other. You can certainly do both virtual and in-person. Thank you for clarifying that for us. Uh, and for those people who just joined us, because they may not have heard earlier on, tell us about the, uh, the initiative to uh, the vaccination initiative that that we're going to have at Harlem Week. Yeah, actually, I, you know, and and I only this is great because I only talked about the one day, um, but at our three you know signature outdoor events, August eighth, the Great Day in Harlem, August fourteenth, Summer in the City, and August fifteenth, uh, Harlem Day, we will have uh, vaccination locations you know at each event so that. Anyone who wishes to get vaccinated um, can do so. You won't need to make an appointment. You can just come on out to the mobile vaccination units and you know get vaccinated uh, for COVID-19 on the spot, um, you know, right there. You're know, obviously free of charge. Um, so anybody in the area, if you're looking, uh, you know, you don't want to go through the the process, the schedule, you don't. You don't want to go to CBS or uh, you, you can come out and these vaccination locations, by the way, are provided by New York State of Health and the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. So it is the city and the state coming together to bring these vaccination locations uh, to these Harlem Week events on August 8th, this Sunday, and then next Saturday, August 14th and August 15th. Great. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, August 8th, and August 14th and August 15th, I will be hosting the live streaming from those events. So make sure that if you can't uh, get there, you can't come into uh, Harlem or uh, you're just, uh, you know, otherwise engaged, make sure you check us out on your smart devices uh, or your computer because we'll be there waiting for you. OK, uh, now also there's another event, the the hackathon. You mentioned that early on, but you didn't go into it for folks who want to know, what is a hackathon? <laughs> well, the, the hackathon is, is a, an activity uh, where, in this case, we have a number of young people between the ages of 13 and 18, 13 and 19, who uh, come together. They're broken up into teams of five or six persons apiece, and they're given a challenge. Uh, the challenge this year is how can uh, they create some technological um, item that will have AI, artificial intelligence, help our community. So when you think of AI, or artificial intelligence, an easy way to think of it is um, Alexa or you know, your GPS, your Google Assistant. You know, things of that nature, that's all artificial intelligence. Uh, so these young people are given a challenge of how can you use artificial intelligence to impact and help our communities. So then the young people look at how they can create an app or a website or something that involves QR codes or those types of things that will deal with issues that we have, whether it's pollution, whether it's homelessness, whether it's mental health, whether it's public safety, uh, etc. And then they present these projects that they've, that they've created to a panel of judges. And then uh, the top three teams are awarded, you know, wonderful prizes. And, and most importantly, they're, they're encouraged for their creativity, for their intelligence, for being able to learn how to work together in many cases with young people they've never met before. And they, they create uh, 
something that that you know sparks interest in many times from many of the judges and sponsors and partners that are that are at the event. I mean, over the years, we've had young people create all types of different apps that um, folks from the MTA have looked at and said, "Wow, that's an interesting thought." You know, um, and, and it's, it really gives young people an opportunity to look at what technology can do and how they can use technology. And in some cases, it gives them the impetus to you know, look at careers in technology based on being able to see how uh, they can use technology during the hackathon. So um, that's a long winded way of answering what the hackathon is. And hopefully I was able to do it you know, pretty clearly. Oh, you, you most definitely did. Um, the Lion of Harlem, uh, Congressman Charles Rangel, uh, he's going to have a summit. Uh, is, is he actually speaking at the summit? No, it, it's named in his honor um, based on, you know, everything that he's done. Um, mm -hmm. the Charles Rangel Systemic Racism Summit uh, you know, started last year for the first time. Uh, in our virtual format. It is again virtual, it's an uh, online summit. It will be uh, viewed on August 10th from noon until 2 p.m. Um, it is moderated by uh, Arthur Chin, a newscaster of 55 TV and, and features um, as panelists, president of the City College of New York, Vincent Boudreau, also features executive director of the American Foundation of the University of the West Indies, you know, who will be a part of Emory Grant is a part of that panel. And then newscaster, poet, activist, uh, Felipe Luciano is also a part of that panel. Um, and they're really discussing, you know, where we are, systemic racism in this country after George Floyd, after Black Lives Matter, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it's a fascinating conversation. Uh, hopefully everyone will come to tune in. Again, you can watch it on harlemweek.com, you know, on August 10th, from 12 noon until 2 p.m. Uh, we invite everybody to to watch, listen, uh, learn, and uh, be inspired. What about the um, Harlem Week Imagination Film Festival? Imagination Film Festival is is a partnership over the last uh, decade plus. Uh, the media arts company based in Harlem, by the name of Imagination, uh, we work with. They feature. Uh, showing independent films that are uh, you know, you know, made by people of color or directed by people of color or written by people of color. Um, it really kind of showcasing our work in culture and film and, and media. Uh, Harlem has partnered with them over the years to do uh, what we call the Outdoor Film Festival. Uh, this year, last year, of course, it was all virtual. This year, it is both. It is a virtual film festival from August 8th through August 12th. And then on August 13th, it is outdoors, uh, taking place at East River Plaza uh, on 117th Street and the East River. Uh, and the film shown on that evening will be In the Heights, the, the hit film from Lin-Manuel and Miranda. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other outdoor film festival will take place on the 14th you know, outdoors in St. Nicholas Park on the Great Lawn in St. Nicholas Park, where uh, we will show a short film uh, celebrating Chadwick Boseman um, that, you know, will show Chadwick Boseman doing uh, work with young people in, um, in Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. And then we will also show, uh, as the day 14th itself is Free Comic Book Day. So we will have a film that kind of celebrates uh, free comic book day. Uh, Ed celebrates one of the great comic book characters, Marvel's Blade anime series. So we'll show three of the uh, episodes of the Marvel Blade anime series on that evening. And then throughout the virtual film festival, festival component, all the films will be films of Chadwick Boseman or Cicely Tyson, who we both have, lo we have lost both of them over the last year. What uh, an incredible rundown we have for Harlem Week this year. Uh, our friend, 
uh, the beloved Billy Mitchell, who is a historian uh, at the Apollo Theater, uh, is going to be uh, taking us through a virtual Apollo tour. Now, I, I've actually been in there and, and taken the tour, but I want you to tell uh, our uh, listeners and our viewers about this virtual Apollo tour. Yes, it is. It is great to be able to experience the history of the Apollo. And if you've never been to the Apollo Theater, this is the next best thing to be able to go on this virtual tour with Mr. Apollo, Billy Mitchell, uh, to be able to hear the stories and, and walk through the orchestra, walk on the stage virtually, be able to go through the dressing rooms and walk in the green room all virtually from wherever you are. And the link to register for the tour is on uh, the HarlemWeek.com website in the schedule on August 11th. The tour will take place at 4 p.m. from 4 to 5 p.m. So uh, certainly you know, go to the website, click on the link, register for the tour, and uh, you know, be amazed with some of the stories and, and feel the history of the world-famous Apollo Theater. Wonderful. Uh, we're winding down now. This has been a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to find out more about Harlem Week and to uh, hear about what uh, the important work that you and, and the folks at the uh, Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, has done and, and continue to do. And I just looked last night to uh, find out that my membership has expired. So at, once we get off here, I'm going to uh, uh, re-up uh, uh, my membership uh, and tell the people real quickly, very succinctly, why it's so important for business people to become a part of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce is, you know, the motto is the business of business is people. Uh, it brings people together, it brings businesses together, uh, whether you're a, a single entrepreneur, quote unquote, mom and pop business or a Fortune 200 company, there is some way that the chamber can help you, uh, whether it's in advocacy, whether it's being able to refer you to someone who's going to be able to help your business, the, the chamber is able to help you in any way, especially if you have any reason to want to do business in Harlem or do business in Harlem. It's a good thing to be a member of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. You can get more information by going to greaterharlemchamber.com and get all the information on membership and learn more about what the chamber does. And you can actually join as a member right there on the site, greaterharlemchamber.com. Well, thank you very, very much, Marco. Uh, I will see you out there August 8th, 14th, and 15th, where I am uh, with uh, Ms. Debbie B, and uh, we'll be co-hosting the uh, live streaming. want to thank you so very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for tuning in to What's Hot Harlem America with G. Keith Alexander. You can go to the App Store and download the Harlem America TV app. Uh, and uh, also, I want to remind you that uh, you can get the full layout, full rundown of Harlem America's uh, uh, rundown uh, of Harlem Week at harlemamerica.com and also go to Harlem Week Dot com. Thank you so much. Have a great day and a better one tomorrow. Don't judge your brother or sister too hard saying you walked a mile in his or her shoes. And remember, life is tough, especially during this epidemic, but uh, you're tougher. OK, thank you. Take care. Bye bye. And that's a wrap. Awesome show today, G. Keith. <laughs> thank you very, very, very much. Marco, you were, I mean, off the top of your head, brother. <laughs> you right, very, very well. <laughs> Oh, Have a fantastic so week. Much. Okay, Aaron, take care. Have a good one. You too. Mm -hmm. All right, G. Keith, we'll, we'll uh, speak back to tomorrow or well, today, tomorrow, tomorrow, and some, certainly see each other on uh, Sunday. Okay, and you want me there? What, what time on Sunday? Uh, 1230 should be good. 1230? Okay. Got yeah. you covered. Okay, dope. All right. Take care. All right, sir. Thank okay. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.